My guess is this will be a completely new topic to you. I don't think your algebra teacher would have, algebra one teacher would have taught this. I could be wrong, but this is most likely going to be new to you. Uh, logarithms. Yeah, I don't know who named it. So these are the types of questions that um, I think it was two days ago. I'm trying to remember the question we were solving. Uh, I think we were doing a money question, and we were trying to figure out how many years it would take until it hit 66,000 or something like that, or 60,000. And what I had you guys do was just kind of plug in numbers until you found the answer. Or at least, you know, between what two numbers. Well, logarithms, I don't want to say invented. Uh, sure, invented. It was basically a process invented to solve for an exponent. So like in this situation, if you have a base number to an exponent that's a variable equal to some number, you can't, re we don't really have like an opposite to solve it, right? Like for everything else, we kind of have opposites to solve where we do, you know, division if it's multiplied, we subtract if it was added. We we have ways to do things. Um, if the power was a 2, we can do a square root because it's opposite. This one, we don't have an opposite. And um, we learned inverse yesterday. Logarithms are the inverse of exponential. And so we have a way to solve the inverse to come up with this answer. So logarithmic, logarithmic form is going to look like this. Log base b of a is going to equal the exponent. I, am I correct in that you haven't seen this before? Yeah. Okay. So I will try to take it as slow as possible because it most likely feels really strange. <clears throat> now, I don't know if you guys have your calculators with you or not. There is a log button on your calculator. It's usually on the left-hand side. Is there a log button on this one? Probably. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's a log button in Desmos. Hi, good morning. Um, Estella, I don't know if you can remember. Once I'm done recording, remind me to switch your attendance. Okay, so here's what I'm kind of curious on those who have a calculator. If you hit the log button, does it give you a spot to put in the base number down below? I definitely can't read that. Oh, yeah, log princess, yeah. Okay, so most of you, some of the newer calculators may be different. Like, I, I know some of the graphing calculators do it differently. Most of you probably only have a button on your calculator that just says log. And then when you hit that button, it's waiting for you to put a number here. Is that correct? Okay. Well, yours has parentheses. <clears throat> so if that's the case, probably for virtually everybody, 
What that is, is it's going to be a log base 10. They don't write base 10, it's kind of assumed. So if there's no number shown on the bottom, it's a 10. Now, if, if you kind of want to play around with this, I probably have this on the following slides, but that doesn't matter, I'll just wait. Let's say we want to do log base 10 of 100. What should that answer be? Before you type it in, yeah, two. And that's because 10 to the second power would be 100. So if you, if you type log of 100 on your calculator, it should tell you two. And so that's, that's the button on your calculators that's kind of built in to help you solve exponential problems. The way we solve them is kind of going backwards and using a logarithmic function, which is the inverse. So that's kind of an overview of logarithms. So we want to solve this, and th we'll pretend you don't have a calculator, okay? And without a calculator, so just giving you a heads up, part of your test is going to be non-calculator, and possibly part with calculator. Um, what we may do is have the calculator part be like take home, like formative instead of summative. Uh, the main part of the test would be non-calculator, so some of the questions would be set up to just where you wouldn't be, you know, required to write a decimal answer. So this would be something similar to that. So we need to change this. Currently, this is exponential form. We want to change it to logarithmic form. This is definitely one of the style questions you're going to have to do, is being able to change it back and forth. OK, the base on the log, where does that come from? The base, the base of the exponent, the base of the exponential form is going to be the base of the logarithmic form. So when you have 10 to the x, that's going to be log base 10. The answer goes in this spot. The exponent is what we're trying to find, so that would be equals the exponent. And it's, it's probably going to take you a little while to get used to being able to write back and forth between them. Uh, what I traditionally do in my head is I look at the logarithmic form, and I know the base of exponential is the same as base on logarithmic. And I know the exponent is supposed to be the answer on the right-hand side. And so this other number I just put in the other spot. Basically, I memorized two of the spots and then just put the third in the only open spot. OK, now I just had you type in log of 100, which was kind of a spoiler, so you already know the answer. We're trying to approximate what the answer to this should be. So 10 to what power would be 95? We know it's, we know 10 squared is 100. And we know that 10 to the first is 10. So the answer to this should be between 1 and 2. And that's because the 95 is between 10 to the first and 10 to the second. It's, it, these questions are absolutely going to seem kind of weird to you for quite a while, especially because it's something you've never heard of or seen before. Yeah. Honestly, this question was just how to convert between the forms. 
So log base 10 of 95 equals x would be your answer. So on the test, I'm going to give you a question, and I'll ask you to convert to logarithmic form, and then I'll give you a log, and I'll ask you to convert to exponential form. Yeah? If someone put, like, one and a half into their answer, would that be wrong? Uh, yes. I feel like I worded it on the test to say what it's between. I mean, I'll understand what you're trying to do, so you'd get, like, most of the credit. Um, but if you're not using a calculator, I like that's about as accurate as you can get. Okay, so I've got two problems up here. Why don't you guys see if you can convert them to the other form? So the top one is in exponential, convert it to logarithmic. The bottom's in logarithmic, see if you can convert it to exponential. I'm going to have to shave again, I think. We have to have the masks, I think, for 20 days or something like that. If the numbers don't go down, are we going different? Um, no idea. Okay. My guess is no. Oh, really? Um, because they don't want people arguing. You know what? Want people arguing with each other about whether you should go to distance or not. like. Because everybody kind of already has the freedom or power to keep your children home, like to do distance learning, sort of. Like most teachers put everything in Schoology already. So if, if your parents are worried about it, they usually are allowed to keep you home anyway. I think they don't switch to distance learning until it's like 10% of the whole school is out. What? 2% of kids with COVID is when we switch to masks. I think it's 10% of the school for any reason, like flu or whatever, um, then they would go to distance learning. I don't know. They're, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how the, like, no, they don't give the numbers anyway, so I don't know why they worry about these percentages. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Could be a combination of things. Uh, you just convert them. If you if you want to solve these, you can. But the goal of this is just to convert. So anyway, my answer is I don't think we'll switch to distance learning because so many people get upset for various reasons. Yes. Oh, we learn how to do that tomorrow. <laughs> um, who should we call on? We should call on. I'm trying to think what I didn't call on yesterday. Melina, I haven't called on you. Were you able to change the top one to logarithmic form? Perfect. So then the way you would read this is log base 5 of 32 equals x. But perfect. Um, anybody you want to call on? <laughs> Shoot. Charlie? Sure, Charlie. Do you, can you think you could help me convert the bottom one into exponential form? Good? Yep. Perfect. Yep. So the base on both of them is considered the base on both forms. So the base on the log would be the base on exponential. And um, like, like I said, the way I do it in my head is I just know that the exponent is the answer over there. Okay. Um, and once you do quite a few of these, 
then it kind of gets ingrained in your head on how to keep doing the converting, and it's something that can be done pretty easily. Okay, let's let's figure out approximate answers. So, like guesstimate between two whole numbers. So we've got log base 10 of 30, log base 2 of 18. My guess is the top one you'll be able to answer pretty much right away, but just because it's similar to the couple we've already done. No. So 10 to the first power is 10. 10 to the second power would be 100. And 30 fits directly in between these two. So then your answer is between 1 and 2. Say it again. The 30? Oh, we're looking for just a rough answer. So if you know 10 to the first is 10, then you know the answer is going to be like a little bit bigger than 1. Okay, log base 2 of 18. Did somebody figure this one out? No. Evan? Did you get the second one? Not yet. Not yet. Oh. Oh, go ahead, Katie. Okay, Alex? You got 4 and 5 as well? Okay, let's figure that out. So between 4 and 5 means you're judging between 2 to the 4th and 2 to the 5th. 2 to the 4th must be 16. Okay, 2 to the 5th would be 32. <laughs> Awkward. 18 fits directly between here. So then your answer is between 4 and 5. Perfect. Nice job. <clears throat> today's, today's mainly going to be just kind of like getting you used to what logarithms are. And then tomorrow is going to be kind of more like learning all the different rules, properties, harder parts of them. Hi. Hello. This is three days in a row. I know. Please. This is the same pass from yesterday. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Jesse. Literally the same pass three days in a row. What? I just got scared. About what? This one looks terrible. I'm erasing this. That's oh. atrocious. <laughs> Let's make a nice. So we're going to graph 3 to the x and then log base 3 of x. Oh shoot, what time do we get done? Yeah, 15. <laughs> I heard a lot of different numbers in a row. So. Okay, so y equals 3 to the x. This is similar to what we did yesterday. Yesterday, you, no, two days ago? Why does it, it feels like two days ago, but that was yesterday. So let's graph three to the x. You basically just plug in some numbers to figure out what it looks like. So let's do this one in uh, blue, I guess. Three to the first would be three. Three to the zero would be one. Three to the negative one 
would be 1 over 3 to the first? Oh. One third. Sure. Every negative power you have stands for, it moves it to the bottom of a fraction. So it would be 1 over 3 to the first, and then you take away the negative sign. Oh my God, I can do it. So if we have 3 to the negative third, <laughs> One over three to the third. What? One twenty seventh. Wait, I'm so confused. Well, didn't we do this two days ago? Yeah, yeah we did, but you just forgot it. Yeah, okay. Kind of brief. So, if you have a negative exponent, <laughs> it stands for dividing that many times in a row, instead of multiplying that many times in a row. So you would divide three by one. So three to the negative one means you divide by three once, and you get one third. 3 to the negative third means you divide by 3 three times in a row, and you get 1 27th. Um, because we're smart. And, well, and if, let's be honest, if, if we can't figure out numbers in Algebra 2, should you really get a good grade? This is the last required class for high school. And if you can't like add, multiply, and stuff, I feel like that's pretty fair that you don't do well. <laughs> oh, I was doing so good on that curve. Just make that point bigger. It's much better than my normal. Okay, now this is exponential form. If I were to put it in logarithmic form, then this would say log base 3 of y equals x. Now, we, we don't traditionally have equals x. We usually have it equals y. So often you will see it written as log base 3 of x equals y. <clears throat> but otherwise, between logarithmic and exponential, that's kind of how you change it. And if I were to make a table for log base 3 of x, I'll make the same table I had over here. Actually, this was a terrible move. We didn't talk about negative numbers in logs, did we? Um, you can't have negative numbers in logs. So let me go to a fresh page here. If we put a negative number in place of x, <clears throat> how come this doesn't work? How come I can't get a negative answer? So this means 3 to some power would equal negative 5. <clears throat> no matter what power you take 3 to, the answer is not going to become negative. So you can't have negative logarithms. You also can't have 0, because 3 to some power would never turn into 0. You could, get an, you could get a really small answer, but you can't get it actually equal to 0. <clears throat> so I screwed up on this one, because I started making a little table with the same numbers. But logarithms don't allow you to have negatives or 0. So I'm basically going to have to pick 1, 2, 3. And in fact, <clears throat> doing logs, it doesn't usually work out well. Log base 3 of 1 is going to be equal to 0. Because 3 to the 0 equals 1. And then 2, I'm not going to do because the answer is a decimal. Log base 3 of 3 is 1. Uh, I'm going to pretend I know what it is. <clears throat> I'm just going to guess. Like if you had a calculator with you, you could figure it out. I don't. It says log of 3 is point point seven. No, you can't use your calculator because that's base 10. Oh my god. Well, when I did log of 1, it equals 0. 
That's because 10 to the 0 is 1. So no matter what base it is, if you do 1, the answer is 0. Yeah, this was basically just to show you that exponential and logarithmic are inverse, which we kind of knew because we were sort of switching their information around anyway. But looking at their pictures, they are mirror images around that. Oh, Emma, was it a long night? No, uh, no. Oh. Is it just super boring today? No, a little bit. Okay, it's okay. You don't have to be nice. That's okay. I'm super tired, too. Okay. I will stop. I don't understand Well, the point... Well, that's kind of the point of practicing it. Um, I wanted to give time in here for you to work on it because these are new to you and they're kind of weird, and I feel like you're going to have questions. That is a lot. That is not a lot. <laughs> yes, it is. You look at it, it looks like a lot. I was thinking like a 